Look at that. Look at the texture of that. See how it looks almost like dried mud? Because it is. See the Hey guys, remember the last video where I was looking at those ancient Salado polychrome shirts and looking at the color of the clay and realizing that it wasn't the same as the local wear and how it was being imported from the Gila River Valley? And totally different texture to the clay. Much finer quality clay, much finer temper, thinner pottery. Fires to a more of a, a sandy brown color than that reddish brown that the local clay was firing to. Well, today I'm going to go to the Gila River Valley and look around for some of those clays and then take them back, fire them, and see if I can get something that matches more closely the prehistoric sherds to what I'm finding on Salado Polychromes. So come with me. I'm out here in the Gila River Valley near Pima, Arizona, and that's where that petrography I was telling you about indicates that a lot of the Salado polychromes in this area were being manufactured. Somewhere on the other side of the river from here, uh, near the town of Pima, uh, in that vicinity, there was a village that was producing a great quantity of Salado polychromes. So I'm gonna head over there and look for some clay. So uh, we'll see what I find. Back in the day, this was a huge waffle garden. Now where I'm standing here is a huge grid of stones that they had used for farming purposes. I'm up here on top of a mesa and they have literally made grids out of these stones that goes on for hundreds of acres. I don't know if you can see the grid pattern very well, but it covers the entire top of this mesa. I drove around Pima for a while. I didn't find a whole lot of clay. I found a lot of real sandy soil. But um, up here by the water tank, I did find this uh, clay material here. So it looks like it might have some salts in it. There's areas where there's a little bit of a white crust on it. Uh, and it might be a little bit silty. So I'm not sure what to make of it, but I'm gonna take some home and uh, run some experiments and see what I've got. That's bad enough to make a couple of pots. Before I left the Gila Valley, I wanted to show you this. The road cut out here on Airport Road. And that right there is pure clay. That's the kind of pure clay that you seldom see in Southern Arizona. Look at that. Look at the texture of that. See how it looks almost like dried mud? because it is. See the texture, see that, see that crumbly texture? See how it breaks into those angular nodules? You see that smooth creaminess of it? Those little bits of, um, of iron in places where it's leached into there? That is the pure stuff right there. Almost never find clay that kind of pure in Southern Arizona. Here in the Gila Valley, there's a few places, but in my area, down around Tucson, Almost never. That's good stuff. And I've used this before. It actually, it's actually pretty usable clay. So I'll get myself a bucket of that while I'm here. There we are. Mount Graham still got snow on it. There it is. Gila Valley. And right there in the distance, that's the Dos Cabezos. So here's that clay I picked up in Pima. can see in looking at it, it's got a nice color because remember that Salado shirts we were looking at were that sandy brown color. It's really hard to tell though what a clay is going to fire. So I really have to grind it up, use it, make some test tiles or test pottery and fire it before I'll really know. But I am encouraged by the light brown color of this. <clears throat> this could be good. Uh, it also, it seems to have some silt in it and that can be a pro or a con. In, in some cases, uh, if it's not pure clay, like that second source we looked at in Safford, um, that, that can actually be good because I have to add non-plastic material to the clay to make it work. So I always, if I have pure clay, I add 
about 25% sand to that just to allow it to dry more evenly and protect it from cracking. So this already has some of that non-plastic material in it, which is why I think it feels a little bit silty or a little bit dirty. That can act as temper for my clay. It, it is possible I'll be able to use this without adding temper. And that may help explain why those Salado polychrome shirts we were looking at didn't have big noticeable chunks of temper in them. Because perhaps it was a, what you'd call a self-tempered clay. Clay that naturally comes with enough impurities or non-plastic materials that it can be used as is. So I'm gonna experiment with this and I'll show you in a future video what I get. In the meantime, if you want to learn more about how I find good clays in nature and how I process those to use in making pottery, check out this video over here, which will take you more in depth on that subject. Thanks for watching. Catch you next time.